All right, it's 11 o'clock here, so we're going to get started. Thank you everyone for joining us today for our webinar. My name is Jackie Carville, and I'll be coordinating the webinar today. I'm here with my colleague Farhan, who will be going over our Sanger sequencing assembly and analysis workflows. You may have noticed that your phone has been muted. However, we do encourage you to ask questions along the way. So to ask a question, just type it into the chat dialog and select Send to Host. I will then direct these questions to Farhan to be answered for the entire group. If you need any assistance or have any uh, problems during the webinar, please let me know and send me a chat message to me, email me at webinars at dnastar.com, or tweet us at the Twitter handle at DNA Star Inc. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Farhan here. Thank you, Jackie. Well, thank you for joining my webinar today on Sanger Data Assembly Analysis and the LazyGene software. Uh, today I'll be going through the various workflows in the software. First, I'll give you a short background on our company. So DNSTAR is located in Madison, Wisconsin, has been for the past 30 years, and this is where our headquarters are. Um, the company was founded by Dr. Fred Blattner out of the University of Wisconsin, and we focus on desktop software solutions for researchers, life scientists, focusing on several workflows, including next generation sequence assembly and analysis, basic molecular biology tools, as well as structural biology. And even though we focus on desktop computing, we do provide powerful solutions for Linux and cloud options as well. Uh, over the past 30 years, we've had more peer-reviewed publications than any of our competitors, and this number continues to grow each year as we get more and more customers using our software and publishing more data and, and publications. Uh, we offer several software suites uh, as part of the LazyGene package. Uh, our most popular suites are the LazyGene Genomic Suite for next generation sequence assembly and analysis. Then we have the LazyGene Evolution Suite, and this is for uh, Sanger data assembly and analysis and phylogenetic analysis as well. And then we have the Laser Gene Structural Biology Suite for protein sequence and structure analysis. The Laser Gene Evolution Suite uh, is what contains Seekman Pro and the Sanger, uh, the Sanger data analysis and assembly that I'll be covering today will be for the most part in Seekman Pro. Uh, the software also works directly with other programs in the Evolution Suite and I will touch on those at the end of uh, my session to see uh, to show you how it interacts with those programs as well. Uh, some of the topics that I'll be covering today uh, will be the actual application interface. I will go into the software, give you an overview. Then I will give you uh, an example of three main uh, alignments, reference guided, de novo assembly, and as well as assembling groups and then I will show you all the analysis tools in each of those assemblies. And at any time you have any questions, please chat them in to Jackie, and she will interrupt me so I can answer them for you. Uh, with that, I will jump right into uh, the software. And i first like to start off with the DNS Star Navigator. The DNS Star Navigator is really where uh, we like to start. It's a hub that groups different programs into different categories so that the user can easily open the program uh, and work with the workflows that they're interested in. Um, we have several sections. We have DNS sequence analysis, next generation sequence assembly analysis, proteomics, gene expression, and utilities. Today we will be focusing on DNS sequence analysis. And as you can see, uh, this package includes uh, all the programs and descriptions of what it can do. And if you hover over any one of these programs, you'll get a summary of uh, what the program can do in more detail, as well as quick tutorial links to uh, common videos. And you can always click on more videos here to see a full list of our tutorial videos. We have over 100 videos on our web page. Uh, for today's webinar, we'll focus on Seekman Pro for our Sanger assembly and analysis. Mind you, this program is our most powerful, one of our most powerful programs that we offer, as it can also uh, import next generation sequence assembly files uh, from our Seekman engine uh, assembler for next gen sequencing. 
So with that, I'll go ahead and open Seekman Pro. And when the program first opens, you'll get two main windows. One is the unassembled sequences window, and one is the contact window to your right. Uh, before performing the assembly, uh, you'll focus mainly on the unassembled sequences window. Uh, this is where you will see your total sequences listed, uh, all the reads that you've input, as well as your reference sequences, if you have any. And you'll be able to uh, choose the type of assembly you would like to do. Uh, you, you can specify your reference sequence, you can add trimming, and you can adjust other options and as well as add vector sequences. And we'll get into that later. On the top, we have the uh, conventional file menus. We have file edit, and then we have some more advanced options for sequence editing, uh, contig analysis, uh, parameter adjustment, and looking at some other views uh, in the software. Um, before starting your assembly and importing data, I, I would recommend going into project and looking at some of the parameters. Uh, this is where you can specify whether to save your trace data with your project. And this really depends on what your goals are. If you want to share your files with colleagues, then I would recommend copying trace data into your project. This will keep all your chromatograms intact with your project. If you do not have this checked, then uh, your chromatograms will not be saved in your project. Uh, you will still be able to view your chromatograms on the computer you've saved your project on. However, if you shared that file with your colleagues, they will be lost. And the reason it's turned off by default is um, simply because it's a smaller file size if you don't save your chromatograms with the assembly. Uh, but feel free to turn that on. I'll check this. And then we have some pre-assembly options. Uh, we have the default trim uh, sequence ends, uh, scan for vector, and then you can also adjust end trimming parameters. Um, the more important one to focus on is assembling. Uh, this is where you'd want to choose the type of assembler uh, you, you will be using. We have two options, pro assembler and classic assembler. Uh, for all assemblies, we recommend using the pro assembler. In the Pro Assembler, you can further change the match sizes, uh, the minimum match percentages, and some of the other advanced options. Um, however, we do not recommend that you change these. Uh, these are thoroughly QA'd and are the best parameters for most assemblies. If you have any specific uh, requirements for your workflows, then you can change these. You can qu click on the question mark at the bottom of the window to get more guidance on what you, each parameter does and what changing it will result in. And if you're not sure about uh, what value to enter, you can always contact us directly, and we can guide you on the parameter settings as well if needed. Uh, similarly, you can keep going down the list and uh, look at pair specifiers. If you have paired end reads, uh, dual end reads, you can choose a pattern from this list. Uh, by default, it's turned off. Uh, then we can also go into SNP discovery, and uh, you can change your heterozygous peak threshold. By default, it's set at 50%, so that if the secondary peak is 50% of the original peak, uh, it will be called a heterozygous uh, base. And then we have additional advanced options for primer walking and uh, coloring as well. And with that, I'll go ahead and close this window. And now I will... Uh, import data into uh, Seekman Pro. Uh, today I will be showing you a de novo. Uh, the first assembly I'll be doing is actually a reference guided assembly. And I'll be using neonatal meningitis E. coli strain RS218. And I'll open a web page here. Uh, so this is uh, an opportunistic bacteria which is transmitted during birth. Uh, this strain was isolated from human neonate uh, with meningitis, and then whole genome sequencing shotgun libraries were constructed using the M13 Janus vector and then sequenced using the 3700 ABI instrument. Um, we have aligned this against the E. coli UTI 89 genome. Uh, it we expect it to have spotty coverage 
uh, just because uh, the two organisms are, they're both E. coli, but they're not very similar at the genomic level. But uh, they do give insights to uh, where certain areas of interest may be uh, between the two organisms. Um, so these are, this is the background of uh, the alignment that I'll be showing you today. And with that, I'll go back into Seekman Pro and input the data. Uh, now, there are multiple ways of importing data. You can go into File, uh, New to start a new project. You can go to File, Open to open an existing project. You can also go into File, Import. Um, additionally, you can go into Sequence menu and choose Add. And this will open a dialog where you can uh, browse to your uh, sequence location and import your reads. You can also go into Sequence menu again and add an entree sequence if you have a locus ID or sequence ID. And you can search through the various uh, NCBI databases, nucleotide, EST, and GSS, for example. And lastly, you can go into Net Search and you can do a new text search. And this could be any generic term or keyword in any of the publications. And it will connect to NCBI databases uh, that you can uh, nucleotide by default, but you can change it to any one of these that uh, you prefer. And you can also further um, filter based on the type of term that you're searching. By default, it's set to all terms, but you can change to any one of these. Uh, and in addition, you can uh, do strict filtering and apply multiple filters to your search criteria. You can add or options, and not, or and. So it's very flexible as far as data entry is concerned. Um, one method that I prefer uh, is drag and drop. So uh, you can also browse to your folder of interest and drag and drop your data right into um, the unassembled sequences window. And I find this the easiest way, but it's really user preference. And as the data are being loaded, you can see the total counts of sequences that are being input into the software. So as we can see, there are a total of 21,837 reads, AB1 files. And then I would also want to import my reference sequence. And that's here. And I can also drag and drop that sequence. So now we see here a list of all of our trace data. If you wanted to look at the actual chromatograms for one read or a multiple reads, all you have to do is double click on it. And once we double click on our read, we can go and see the chromatogram. At the bottom, you can see the base calls. And if you wanted to see the quality scores, you can press and hold the Q button and switch to Q, and that will give you the quality scores for each base call. And notice that towards the end of the sequence 3 prime end, as well as the 5 prime end, the quality is low. This is quite normal for Sanger data, and the end trimming during the assembly will take care of this. Now, you can choose to do the end trimming before the assembly uh, or during the assembly. I'll show you options for both. If you want to trim your reads before performing your assembly, you can highlight the reads that you want trimmed. I'll just select a few here. And then you can go into Trim Ends. And you can say Scan Selections or Scan All. So if I do Scan Selections, it will perform the trimming based on quality. And then you can see the updated limits here. Uh, you can then go into a Trim Report. So you go to Project Menu and then Trim Report. And you can look at the actual trimming that occurred uh, for each of the sequences. Additionally, uh, since these data uh, use the M13 Janus vector, we can do a vector scan. And similarly, you can highlight all of your sequences. And then you can pick the Janus vector from the pull-down menu. And then when you're ready to perform the scan, you can simply go into Options and do the scan. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, I'll just select a few sequences here. And then I'll go into Options and say Scan Selections. 
it will scan for the vector. Notice that some of the sequences have question marks and other have uh, a check mark. By default, um, a question mark means, an upside down question mark means that the vector was not found um, in that particular sequence. A check mark means that it was found and it was trimmed. So if I double click on uh, this check marked read, I will be able to see where the trimming occurred, where the vector was. So here, it's clear that the vector sequence was detected from the 5 prime end going into about 55 base pairs in, and that portion was trimmed off. And similarly, at the 3 prime end, we'll see a similar result if there, if there was any found. And all these data uh, information are stored in the trim report. So you can go back into project trim report and get an updated summary of the vector trimming as well. Uh, you get the parameters that were uh, set, the default parameters, as well as the vector that was defined for trimming. And then you can get additional details, such as the average quality, amount trimmed, the pre-trim length, and the post-trim length. And at the bottom, you'll get an average for all. So we'll close that. Uh, if there's a vector that uh, you used and it's not listed here, you can add it easily to the software. All you have to do is go into uh, project menu and vector catalog and then click on new you find your vector sequence and then it will be added to the list and then you can use your custom vector uh, as scan during the scanning process uh, so mind you this uh, scanning and trimming was done before the assembly if you choose not to do it before you can simply select your vector and when you click on assemble it will automatically do the trimming and vector scanning uh, during your assembly process. Uh, so it's really up to you how you want to proceed with that. Uh, so with that said, I will now uh, open a pre-assembled project. Uh, the assembly takes uh, about half an hour to complete, so in the interest of time, I ran the assembly uh, before the webinar, and I will now go ahead and open the results. So when the assembly finishes, the first window you will see is this report window. Uh, this report window will have a summary of what happened to all the reads. Uh, it will give you uh, details uh, if a read was not added to a contig, and if it was added to a contig, it will tell you which contig it, it went into. For example, at the top of this report, uh, we have a summary that uh, the first few reads were not added because they were either Poor, poor data or too short to be considered as part of the assembly. Uh, and then if you go down, we can actually see the reads that went into the contigs. And if you go at the bottom of this window, we'll get a total assembly, uh, total assembly time um, for this alignment. And here we see it's uh, around 30 minutes. And the next, this is just an overall uh, summary of your assembly then you would want to focus on this contig window. This contig window will have a list of all the contigs that were formed out of your assembly. And then on the bottom, you will see a list of all the reads that went into each of the contig and the corresponding contig number to your right. And you can easily browse through this. If there's a specific read that you're interested in looking at, you can double click on that specific read, for example, and it will jump to that location in the alignment view. Uh, with that, um, we'll focus on the top part of this window of the contact view. Uh, notice that we have different columns. We have name, length, and sequences. Each of these columns is sortable. You can sort by name, sort by length, or by sequences. I like sorting by length. This way, um, the longest, biggest contact comes to the top. And now what I want to do is double-click on this contact and that will take us to the alignment view. Uh, this alignment view will show you where all the reads are. It will give you an overview of, of the features at specific locations. Um, it will show you any SNPs that may occur in your uh, alignment, as well as all the translations. So on the top left, you'll see your current selection. Um, if your cursor is at a specific position, you'll just see that position and the depth at that specific position. In this case, uh, we have depth of 24, 
and the position uh, 3.7 million, it's too long of a number to read offhand, but anyhow, uh, that's where the position is. On the top right end, you will see the total length of the contig. And you can scroll through this list and you can go easily back and forth. It's very speedy. Um, and this is an example of a large bacterial assembly. And on smaller assemblies, it would take less than a minute to complete, um, usually a few seconds to finish. Uh, but this this just shows you the scalability of the software. On the left, top left, we have these co quick commands. We have zoom in and zoom out. If you want to zoom in, you can use these uh, magnifying glass. Uh, you can hide um, sequence names in your alignment. So if we were at a deeper area, here for example, you can click on these arrows and that will hide sequence names. Um, you can adjust the height difference. And this is not really applicable here. And then we have this banana tool. This banana tool allows you to manually move sequences around. And uh, you can choose to do that for uh, very advanced um, sequence um, assemblies and manual editing. So I will cancel that. I won't do that right now. And then you can also choose to display quality scores. All you have to do is press and hold this cube, and that will display the quality scores for each base. And then we also have the star button right here, and that will allow you to quickly navigate your alignment to look at regions of conflict, SNPs, and features. So here's the window. You can move this around. And if I click on next, it will take me to just the next conflict. And feature-wise, if I click on previous feature, it will take me to the previous feature. And uh, you can look at the actual features by clicking on this uh, reference sequence. So the reference sequence is italicized. Um, this would have happened at the time of importing your assembly. When you click Mark Ref, it would have italicized this reference sequence. And we can now see that the uh, individual features are highlighted. And if I go to the next feature, I can quickly browse through the alignment. And similarly, I can do the same thing with SNPs. Uh, if you wanted to look at individual uh, trace data for the reads that went into the alignment, all you have to do is click on these triangles next to the individual reads. When you do that, it will expand on the trace data. If you have a deeper area that you're looking at, let's find one. Here, for example, you can press and hold the Alt key and then press on the triangle to expand the chromatograms for all of your reads. And this just makes it easier if you are looking at a particular SNP or areas of uh, interest. And similarly, you can press and hold the Alt key again and uh, close uh, that view. And I'll, you can also turn off the quality scores to switch back to bases only. Um, so this was an overview of the alignment view. I'll now give you an overview of the strategy view, which will show you the histogram. There are multiple ways to go into the strategy view. You can go into project. Uh, contig actually, and then strategy view. Or you can right click on your contig and go into strategy view. And when you go into strategy view, you'll see a similar layout. Uh, on the top left, we have positions. We have the quick controls to uh, zoom in and zoom out and hide sequence names. And we have the star to look for conflicts or features. On the top, we have a ruler with the uh, total size. So if you go all the way to the right, we can see the total contig size. And on the bottom, we have the reference sequence and as well as individual reads. Uh, and in the histograms, we have the depth of coverage histogram, and then we have features. If you wanted to see uh, conflicts that occurred in the assembly, you can 
check mark the conflict threshold and then that will give you a new histogram showing where areas of conflict are. And these hash marks in the reads, they represent where the SNPs occur. So as you can see, it's very powerful and easy to use. And if you wanted to hide sequence names and get a quick overall picture of the assembly, click on these arrows and you can get this hidden sequence names, and this is really useful when you're zoomed in. Um, so I zoomed out quite a bit. So here, as you can see, when we hit the sequence names, we can easily look at the coverage and scroll through our assembly. And if we show them, we get more details. And zooming in, it closer and look at that specific region. So that's a quick overview of the strategy view. I will now go into the SNP report and the SNP report is really used for uh, quickly navigating your alignment and to get into the SNP report all you have to do is go into the SNP menu and choose SNP report and the SNP report is very powerful. Um, this allows you to quickly navigate and look at areas of interest in your alignment and strategy view. This window is interactive with both the strategy view and uh, the alignment view. So if I open both of these, you can quickly navigate through this report and look at areas of interest. I'll give you an overview of the SNP report first before I do that. Uh, on the top left, we have a summary of all the total SNPs in the project. We have approximately 155,000. Uh, then we have the filtering tools that we can use to uh, focus on specific types of SNPs. Uh, and then we have the columns for SNP, contig ID. We have position, the contig reference, uh, the type, the reference base, call base, SNP percentage. Uh, if there's a DB SNP ID, you would see that number here as well, as well as if there are any codon changes and feature names, as well as depth of coverage. Uh, we have additional details here, such as accounts for each base. Uh, you can choose to hide or show columns uh, by right-clicking in this gray area, and then go into Show Hide Columns, and then you can just uncheck all of the columns that you do not wish to see to keep it more organized for uh, your workflow. Uh, notice that uh, the SNP column has these question marks. Uh, all that means is that there's a putative, putative SNP found, uh, you can go into any one of these areas and you can confirm or reject a SNP. If you decide that a particular SNP is a true SNP, you can click on the question mark once and it will turn to a check mark. And in the actual alignment view, you can see that will uh, be turned to green. And as you're, auto as you're checking your confirming your SNPs, your reference sequence is being auto annotated and then you can use that reference sequence for future assemblies, and then you will have a list of known SNPs and novel SNPs in that case. So this is a very powerful tool. If you click on this one more time, it will reject your SNPs, and it will turn into red. And, and notice how when we clicked on this particular SNP, it jumped to that area in both the strategy view and the alignment view. You can zoom in here a little bit, get a better idea. So this way you can quickly navigate um, through the project. I like filtering based on uh, SNP percentage. So if I click on SNP percentage, it will bring the 100% SNPs to the top. And I can focus on those specific areas. I can look at uh, the coding feature distances and any codon changes. And I can quickly navigate through the project. Uh, another option you have for filtering is the advanced filter options. You can click on filter, and that will allow you to filter um, based on additional criteria, such as if you're only looking for substitutions or indels or both. You can add a maximum distance to a coding feature. So if I were to add 200, for example, it will update that on the fly. I can change the SNP percentage from zero minimum to 50 minimum, and then I can always add depth. Uh, 
by default it's set at um, unlimited depth, but you can change that to minimum depth of 5, for example. And when you do that, your SNP report will update according to the advanced filtering options that you're selecting. So we went from about 155,000 to 152 SNPs based on the criteria that I selected. So this will make it very easy for you to focus on specific areas of interest. Uh, another way of going and looking at areas of interest is using the feature table. You can go into features menu and select show feature table and this will populate a list of all the features annotated in your reference sequence. And similarly, uh, this feature window is also interactive with all of the other views, the alignment and strategy view. So if you wanted to focus on this particular CDS, YAX, you can click on it once and it will jump to that area in the alignment view as well as the strategy view. And if you wanted to get more details on the specific feature, you can look at both the feature table or you can hover over it on um, the actual feature in the alignment view as well as the strategy view. And it will give you additional details such as the type, the name, the location, and sequence. And it will also give you a total SNP count in the SNP uh, in the feature table. So it's very powerful. Uh, so these are all the main views I wanted to show you in uh, the reference guided alignment. Uh, I will now go ahead and close out of this project and I will proceed to a de novo assembly. Hi Farhan, before we uh, go ahead to that de novo assembly, I do have one question for you here. Um, someone wanted to know what kind of a hardware setup uh, do they need to run these reference guided Sanger assemblies? Sure. So Seekman Pro is a very robust program. It requires basic uh, configuration. Uh, any Windows 7 32-bit computer uh, will do up to 4 gigs of RAM is sufficient. But even if you have less, uh, 2 or 3 gigs of RAM, or, or even less than that, depending on your size. But for the larger ones, uh, up to 3 gigs of RAM should be sufficient. Um, and any uh, modern dual core processor would be able to run your assembly. If you have older um, hardware, that should also work just fine. So uh, it, the program, because it's so robust, that really is not a concern uh, for most um, hardware types. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So I'll go ahead and close my windows here. And now to start a new project, I'll go back into the file menu and choose new. And that will open the unassembled sequences window again, as well as the contig view. And I will now go ahead and add my sequences. And last time I did drag and drop because I had several thousand sequences, but this time around I'll go into add sequences. And then I'll just navigate to the folder of interest. So here I have a bunch of ABI reads and click on add and then done to enter. And again, I can click on any one of these to look at the actual chromatogram and quality scores by pressing holding the Q. And I can also look at Q over N, which gives um, quality scores in relative to the window size there around. And you can get more information on the difference between Q and Q or N through our help menu. And again, uh, we can select all of our reads here and choose our vector. So we'll pick Janus vector again. And we can choose to do the scanning before the actual assembly. So we'll go into Options and do Scan All. And we get a report right away. Minimize this for now. We can go into the actual trim report now and look at what happened, just like last time. And uh, now, because we have uh, paired end, dual end reads, 
that we're working with, uh, we want to specify uh, that these are paired end reads. And to do that, we would go into the project menu and then parameters. And now we will go into pair specifier. Uh, in pair specifier, I can look at some example names. It looks like the first one matches the naming convention I have best, so I will select this. Uh, if your naming convention is different from any of these listed in this pull-down menu, you can go into Other, and you can specify your own pattern. And we can help you if you have uh, this situation. But for our purposes, we'll go back and choose the first option. And we'll just go into the SNP discovery and make sure our threshold is correct at 50%. And uh, note, if I were to change the SNP threshold to 75%, uh, that would then change the heterozygous calls to uh, peaks that are 75% of the primary peak. Um, and if I were to lower this number to 25, for example, it would then look at a lower threshold at 25% of the primary peak. But we will leave this as default at 50%. Click on OK. Now uh, we have scanned our vector, and we're ready to assemble. And to begin your assembly, all you have to do is click on Assemble. And once we have assembled, again, we will get this report. This will give a summary of our assembly, the total time it took, and the reads that went into the project. So here we will sort again based on length in the contig window. And then I will go ahead and open the contig. And here you can see that we have a true consensus. So on the top, again, we have the consensus. We can look at all six reading frame translations by clicking on the triangle next to translate. And again, we can look at the actual chromatograms for each read by expanding the triangle next to the individual read or reads. As you're going through um, your assembly, you may see areas that are marked in red. All that means is that there's a conflict at that specific position. So again, I'll close this, and I'll go into the strategy view for this contig. So now I'm going to contig strategy view, and this will give me a summary of all the reads in the alignment. And note we have different coloring in the strategy view this time. Um, the coloring is specifying uh, whether there's a pair that was found and uh, whether it's a match or, or there was no match. And you can go into this key. On your left, we now have these, you can see these colorful arrows that are now uh, active. You can press and hold and then go into the key to your right. And this will inform you what all the different colors are and will allow you to filter based on specific pairs or unpairs that you want to focus on. So for example, by default, it shows all reads, whether they're pairs or not. If you wanted to look at pairs only, you can click on this pairs only option, and then it will focus only on those pairs. And likewise, you can click on unpaired only, and then it will only show those specific reads. Um, you can mix and match from all these, so uh, you can have this open at all times. It's very powerful. I'll close this for now. And uh, this is just a strategy view of one contig. Because we have a de novo assembly, and you may want to uh, merge the different contigs into one big contig, uh, you can do that. Uh, first, I'll close the contig uh, strategy window right here and the alignment. And then you can click on unlocated contigs and right click on it and choose scaffold strategy view. And this will give you a super strategy view of all of your contigs. And here you can see your contig numbers. We have contig 3, 2, and 1. And then you can look at individual reads in this assembly. So you can zoom in. You can zoom out. You can hide sequence names or show sequence names. And you can also look at uh, conflict areas or features if there are any annotated. 
so this makes it very easy. Uh, we have several micro-editing tools uh, built into the software. Uh, you can go into this contact menu, and you can then go into any one of these micro-editing tools for closing a genome. Uh, most of these tools were developed uh, when Dr. Fred Blattner was sequencing the E. coli genome and used in that project, and uh, they've remained in the software for closing genomes, uh, if that's what uh, you need to do. Uh, these can also be used with next-gen data if you have any um, uh, next-gen data from Sigmund Engine that you're working on. And my colleague Matt Kaiser did a separate webinar focusing on micro-editing uh, within Sigmund Pro. Uh, that webinar is also an hour in length and only focusing focuses on micro-editing. So I would recommend you viewing that video if uh, you're interested in uh, closing gaps and uh, performing edits. Um, I can show you some basic editing here uh, in the alignment view. In any of the alignment views, you can open and you can delete a base, or you can add gaps, or you can add bases. Uh, that will, of course, change your overall alignment, but you can do, uh, do those kind of editing. Um, also, if you wanted to um, improve coverage at a specific area, or uh, you wanted to walk into gaps, uh, you can easily do that, design primers from within Seekman Pro. And to do that, you go into Project Menu, uh, actually Contig Menu, and Primer Walk. And in Primer Walk, you can choose to walk into gaps, improve coverage, or do both. And we'll select both for this, and then you can uh, specify the additional advanced parameters, uh, such as target TM, uh, the three prime terminus, uh, and if you wanted to see alternate primers, uh, you can change the number from zero to five, for example, and you can do either strand or each strand. Um, we'll just leave this as default. Uh, you can also choose a clone coverage if uh, that's what you're interested in. So once you've set your advanced parameters and specified the type of uh, primers that you want to design, click on OK. And then the software will go through and generate a primer report. And this primer report is, again, interactive with all the other views. So you can have the views open side by side and look at where the primers are uh, in both the strategy view and the alignment view. So I'll first focus on the alignment view here. If I wanted to look at a specific primer, for example, I can double click on it. It will take me to the alignment view. And we can see the traditional coloring convention, top primer being colored in green. And if we were to look at a bottom primer, that would be colored in red. And we can see all those primers throughout this alignment. And we can look at the same um, type of coloring in our strategy view. So if I were to open the strategy view here, you can see the top and bottom primers uh, through across all three contigs. Again, you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, but it's it'll be much easier to look at the specific pr primer based on the start, the end site, um, the length, the TM, uh, and the distance. Again, this this window itself is very uh, useful and allows you to focus on uh, primers that uh, of best score uh, or beat the best criteria based on what you're doing. So again, we can quickly navigate through primer report and look at all the different results. If you wanted to sequence your primers and export this list, all you have to do is go to File, Save Primer Info, and this will make a text file of all your primers with all the additional details in this report. And uh, that was pretty much uh, all I wanted to show you in the de novo assembly, um, all the other views uh, are more or less the same uh, that you, I showed before in the reference guided assembly. And um, with that, I will go ahead and close these windows, and I will proceed to the last assembly, assembling groups. 
uh, which is most useful for um, multiple samples that you may have, for example, a 96-fold plate. And I will start a new project again, go to File Menu, New. And again, I will uh, click on Add Sequences to import my reads from the folder of interest. Here I have three samples with both forward and reverse. Highlight them all, and click on Add, and then Done. Um, again, if there were vectors in here that you want to trim out, you can highlight them and choose your vector. And if they are found, uh, they'll be trimmed uh, during scanning. So again, we go to Options, Scan All, and it looks like they were found in all but one of them and trimmed out. Uh, and once you have done your uh, vector scanning, and we'll also go ahead and do our trim ends, scan all, you're now ready to do the assembling groups. And to run your assembling groups, all you have to do is highlight your sequences and then click once on assembling groups. And this will open a new window at the bottom. And this is where you specify a common file name for grouping, a naming convention. Um, so here, if I highlight sample 2, for example, it will take that uh, as an example, as a sample name and use that as a template for making groups. So here now we can see sample 2 will be um, added to sample 2 group, uh, forward as well as reverse, and sample 1, forward and reverse, will be added to sample 1, and similarly for sample 3, they will be grouped into sample 3. Uh, so this is giving you a preview of what to expect after assembly. Once you've specified your groups, you can click on Assemble, and then we'll get three groups with our reads in it. So in this example, I only have uh, three contigs. I had three uh, groupings here. But you can easily have 96 uh, on a 96 volt plate. And again, the first thing that opens up is this report. I can see the default parameters that were set. And then I go into the contig window, uh, alignment view, by double clicking on the contig for sample three and this will show me both the forward and reverse reads. And you can also go into the strategy view, right click, strategy view, and I can similarly see the forward and reverse reads. And you can do that for each of these. Um, you can also view a super uh, strategy view um, of all the contigs. Right click on unlocated contigs, and then go into scaffold strategy view. Again, we can see both forward and reverse reads. Get a quick overview. A note that you can change the uh, sample names uh, by holding, pressing, holding the actual name of the sample or the contig, and you can name it whatever you like. Uh, you can rename it to contig three if you prefer, or, or give it any other custom name. So you can do that for each of the contigs. Um, one additional uh, feature I wanted to point out, it's a hidden feature. If you're looking for a specific search term, uh, you can uh, search sequence, for example. You can click on this gray area at the bottom of the contig window. Watch my mouse and you can start typing here. So, for example, if I type sample 1, it will search for that contig in your contig view. And you can also search... Uh, this is more useful in a larger assembly, uh, but you can do that. Uh, another uh, way to search your assemblies is through um, clicking on this unspecified search in the alignment view, and that will allow you to search for bases, for example. Uh, you can search for literal ambiguity. You can search for conflicts, SNPs, uh, differences in consensus. Um, and you can also choose between the consensus or the actual sequences. Uh, so this is very powerful. And, and you can do this in any of your assemblies, de novo, reference-guided, 
or assembling groups. And you can also go to uh, this Find menu, Search menu, through the Edit menu, and then go into Find. And um, let's say you wanted to jump to a specific position in your alignment. You can do that through the Edit menu as well. So go into Edit menu and say Go to Position, type in the number, say 540 for example, and it will take us to that specific position. And this will happen both in the alignment and the strategy view if you have it open. Um, so that was the main features I wanted to show you in this uh, assemble by group. Now, if you have multiple samples, you may be interested in doing some phylogenetic analysis. And that's very easy to do in the evolution suite because the different programs are connected with each other. Uh, in this example, you can select your three contigs. And if you had multiple more than that, you can select all of them. And then you can go into File menu and choose Send Consensus to Megaline. Megaline is our software for multiple sequence alignments and phylogenetic analysis. Uh, so it will automatically send the consensus sequences of all three contigs to Megaline. And then you can go into uh, one of the alignment methods, Align menu, and choose Cluster D or W, Jot and Hine. And then you can go into View, and then look at the phylogenetic tree, and you can get a quick overview of any similarities. And uh, we have a separate webinar that focuses on multiple sequence analysis in Megaline Pro as well as Megaline, um, the two programs that we use for phylogenetic analysis. And with that, I uh, wanted to end this uh, webinar, and thank you for joining me today. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, chat them in, and uh, I'll be happy to answer.